Hey, this is Jerry from Blizz Studio, and in this Happy Holidays game tutorial, we're gonna be using Link Touch with Unity and also Playmaker to go ahead and set up a little Santa game. We're gonna be able to drag our sleigh around the screen and set up collecting presents. And if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so here I am in Unity, and I've already got this scene kind of set up a little bit, but I wanna go through what I have. So currently I have a particle effect that is the clouds. It's really just a large box. I have it slightly angled down so that the player makes it look like they're kind of going over the horizon a little bit and then the clouds are moving towards you. I've also already set up a collectible present. I've also set up a tag as present that goes with, along with that. And then inside of this, I've also set up the cube, which is the present. I have that rotating. I also have a particle system that makes it look like it sparkles. And then I also have a point light, which is actually just kind of slightly illuminating that particular package. I've also set up a Playmaker FSM on this present. It's translating the game object, so it's moving it in a negative Z direction, so it's moving it towards us at a negative four. Now I'm doing that per second every frame. And then I'm also getting the position of that present and then if the present reaches a negative 18, which is behind the camera, it's going to then call a destroy self, which is then destroying self. That's the only thing we need to do. And I've already set this up as a prefab, so I can go ahead and delete that. The other thing that I've done is I've gone ahead and set up my sleigh. Now this sleigh I have, the only thing I've set up on here is just a sphere collider. I also need to go ahead and add a rigid body to this. We want the, the presence to actually be collected by the sleigh. So I also need to have this as a rigid body. So we're gonna add a rigid body to this game object. And we need to go ahead and set up Lean Touch. So I'm gonna use Lean Touch Plus. There's gonna be a link in the description down below. And I wanna go ahead and add a lean touch game object. And with this lean touch game object, I also need to add simulator. That's gonna allow me to detect if I'm clicking on screen and dragging. So it's gonna simulate touch event. So let's go ahead and set up the sleigh. Now the idea that I wanna do is that I want to be able to drag the sleigh around the screen, but I'm going to have reindeer out front and I'm gonna add two components. I'm gonna add a lean chase component and the dampening right here. So let's go ahead and look at this real quick. In the dampening, we have instantly change as negative one. So that's if we touch the screen somewhere else, our, our game object is going to instantly move to that position. We've got zero as no change, one as slow change, and then the higher the number, the faster it's going to move that position. So we're gonna start out at a zero Z index, which is where our sleigh is. And then the further we get away from that, we, we want to move faster. So our sleigh is going to move fairly slow, but then the reindeer that are out front are going to move faster. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set this up as a dampening of two. And we want this to also add a lean multiple update. Okay, so this is gonna allow us to update multiple things. And the specific thing that we're gonna look at here is an on-world vector three. So I'm gonna take my sleigh, I'm gonna drag it down into the game object that we want to update. And then the function is I want to do a lean chase set position. Then the other thing I wanna do here is the screen depth. Instead of depth intercept, I'm gonna go ahead and choose auto distance. And then we can go ahead and close show unused events. So then we see just those two things that we've updated. The next thing we wanna do is to go ahead and set up the deer. I'm gonna add a component. I'm gonna add the lean chase. And I'm gonna set the dampening. It's slightly in front of the sleigh, so I'm gonna increase the dampening. So instead of two, I'm gonna make it three. And then we also need to add the lean multiple update. And again, those two things that we're looking to do here is to screen depth, auto distance. That's good. And then we, we're gonna do on world vector three. And at runtime, we are going to update our deer game object. And then what we're trying to update is the lean chase set position. So there's one more thing I need to update before we just give this a real quick test. I'm gonna have the position, currently we've, we're setting the position in the lean chase. So I want the, that first deer to be slightly to the right. So because I'm gonna add more deer in there, I wanna go ahead and have the offset be a 0.7. Cool, which is the position that it's at currently. 
All right, so let's go ahead and just give this a test. So when I move up, the deer should move before the sleigh. So there's one thing I forgot to do, and that was in my rigid body, I should uncheck use gravity because we're not using gravity in this. So you can see my deer moves just a little ahead of the sleigh. So as I drag up, the sleigh is slightly different. And let's add more deer. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that deer. And I'm gonna move it slightly in front of the first one. And I want to, in my lean chase, the dampening, I'm gonna go from three to six. So I wanna move it, have it move faster than this first one. Oops. Duplicate it again. And again, increase the dampening. Let's maybe go to 11. And do it one more time. And let's maybe make this like 17. Try something like that. So I'm increasing the number slightly each time. All right, so there's my first four deer. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And then the positioning here, I'm gonna have the position be a negative 0.7. And then in the offset, I want that to also be negative 0.7. Cool, all right, so let's give this a test real quick to see how it works. There we go, so we now have Santa in his sleigh with a reindeer out front and now you can see how that actually works. Okay, and the other thing that I already have set up in the scene is a present spawner, okay? So currently the present spawner is a little bit out in front and let me just select that real quick. So it is way out in front. And what I'm doing with this present spawner is I have two states. The first one is that I'm grabbing a random float between negative five and five. So that's on the left and the right. And then I'm also grabbing a random float on the y-axis, so up and down. And then I'm storing those. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm updating the position of the spawner, so this game object, it's gonna base it off of those random numbers. So it's gonna do that once. Then we're gonna go to a spawn present state. And in this, we're gonna grab one of those present prefabs and we're going to put it on screen. We want to spawn that at the spawner. So we're gonna spawn it right here. And then we're gonna do a random wait in between four seconds and eight seconds. And then we're gonna loop back and do this again. So every time that we generate one of those presents, it's going to be on a different part of the screen. So let me go to my present spawner. So you can see one of those presents was spawned. We're waiting for a few seconds and then another one was generated. And so you can see those presents are coming towards me. So let's go ahead and set up a game manager that's going to detect those presents for us. So we're gonna create a new empty game object. We'll call this game manager. And then with that, I need to, I'm gonna go ahead and take my present spawner and just add it to my game manager. I'm gonna take my game manager and I need to add an FSM here and we're gonna detect our presence. So let's go ahead and Okay, so now that we have that in, we're gonna do a trigger event. And we're gonna do a trigger of our sleigh. And then on trigger enter, we wanna detect if we collide with a tag of present, then we're gonna send an event. So let's go ahead and create a new event. And we'll call this add to score. Cool, let's go ahead and add that. Then let's drag off to a new state. And we'll call this add to score. The other thing we also need to do in this is if we do hit that present, we need to go ahead and then destroy that game object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and store what we've collided with. And we're gonna detected present. And then over here in our add to score, we're going to add to a score and then we're also going to delete that game object. So here, let's go ahead and destroy object and the game object we're going to destroy is the game object that we stored so detect present 
So here we've detected it, we've saved it, and now we're here we're saying, hey, take that what whatever we saved and go ahead and destroy it. Then we need also need to add to a score. So first we need a, a UI. We'll create a quick UI. So I've created a, a canvas. We'll call this in-game UI. And I'm going to do a text mesh pro game object. And we'll call this score. And in this score, we are going to go ahead and just put zero here for now. And center that game object. And then we need to increase where that's at on our screen. So let me just double click on it. We're gonna move this up. And I'm gonna move that to the top center of my screen. And I wanna anchor it there. Okay, so we have our game UI set up. Now, the thing we want to do here is that we also need to add to our score. So we, are, we need to create a variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable that is going to be an int type variable. So we'll go ahead and create an int. We'll call this score. And it's going to start out at 0, which is perfectly fine. So first, we're going to add to that int value. Okay, so we're going to do when we score, we want to do an int add. And I want to do this before the destroy game object. And we're going to do a score. And we're going to add one. And we don't want to check every frame. Okay, so I'm adding to that score, but now I need to update that UI based off that score. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a convert int to string. And we can do that here, which is perfectly fine. We're gonna use our score int value, and we're gonna create a new variable called score text. So we're taking that int value, we're changing it to a text string, and then we're gonna update. And we wanna do this after our int add score. Okay, so we can have converted that number, but now we need to update our UI with that number. Okay, easy way to do that is we're gonna take our score, just drag it down into our state, and then I wanna update a set property. And in that, I wanna I wanna go down to text string, and the value I wanna update is score text. So I'm gonna use that score text to update that UI. So after we've set our property of our UI, we need to then go back to be able to detect more presence. So let's go ahead and do a finished transition and we're gonna go back to detect presence. What we wanna do is to add some sound to this as well. When we're adding to our score, let's go ahead and add a sound effect. So what I'm gonna do is to play sound and the sound that we're gonna add is our, I have a collect present sound, so present collect. I'm gonna drag that in. So we're gonna play that. So in my game manager, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new empty game object call that sound. In this game object, I, all I really want to do is just attach my sound. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new component. I want to add an audio source component. And then in the audio source, I'm going to go ahead and attach these bells, which is just a looping audio clip. And I'm going to set the volume of it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit play and let's give this a test. So I've got my sleigh being able to slay, got my sleigh being able to fly through the clouds. You know, collecting packages, adding to the score, playing a sound. There we go. Merry Christmas. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Happy holidays, and I wish you all the best. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.